We have our NFL Live NFL analyst, writer. At this point, her resume is like 15 pages long. Uh, you see her all over ESPN. You see her even over on ABC. I used to call her a friend, but she became a celebrity over the last few days. So I'm not even sure if we're <laughs> in that space, but I'm just psyched to have her on this show. Uh, I mean, it's been a minute since I have randomly FaceTimed you in the early hours of between 5 and 7 a.m., but it's so awesome to see you. What's up? How you been? Well, I, I want to clarify something. I am far from a celebrity. Um, I am friends with the celebrity, David Chang, the chef and television personality, and um, I guess closer friends or... Maybe he thinks of me as more of a resource than I thought before until recently when he had, I became his lifeline. Yes, this is what everyone has been watching uh, on social media pretty much for the last 24 hours. The fact that you are on the show in someone's lifeline is insane, but it also makes a lot of sense because here's the thing, you were successful. Let's take a look at the clip. All right, Mina, although he and his wife never touched a light switch for fear of being shocked, who was the first president to have electricity in the White House? Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant, Benjamin Harrison, Chester A. Arthur, or Andrew Johnson? Grant, uh, Harrison, Grant. Arthur, Johnson. That would be the 1800s. I think it's, it's probably Harrison. But David Chang. Your metallic testicles just won you a million dollars for your charity. What? 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 <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Wow. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? 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 This is incredible. Mina, we have so many questions for you. I want to get to talking football with you, obviously, because we, we want to hear some of your, your, your hot takes here. But what was going through your mind when he called you? Oh, bleep, because I was hoping he wouldn't call me. And also, they told me a window in which he would call, and we were getting to the end of the window, so I thought he had been eliminated from the show, and I was relieved, Diana, because, like I said, I didn't want him to call me. Um, not just because of the stress, but, you know, it's for charity, it's for him. It wasn't like I was playing for myself, so it was extra stressful. And then when the phone rang and I picked it up and it was Jimmy Kimmel, I think my heart just leapt out of my <laughs> chest. And honestly, I kind of blacked out. How confident were you in the answer that you gave? 50-50. So two of them I had ruled out, uh, Grant and Johnson, just knowing when the electric light bulb was invented, but I was like 50% confident. And then listening to it, I sounded way more confident. Even though I said probably, I really should have hedged more than I did and I got really lucky. Mina, why do you know when the electric light bulb was founded, created? <laughs> like, I don't even know when I was born. Well, ever, 1880, it's like the end of the 19th century. That's, I don't Wait, know. Mina was about to say <laughs> I don't know everybody why I know that. knows that. Okay, but the, the other big thing, Mina, is like, when did all of this, because we all know these things are taped, when did you know you'd helped him win a million dollars, and how'd you keep the secret? Um, we were taped this months ago, so I was sitting on it for a long time, and then I kind of forgot, uh, and then <laughs> Chang let me know it was airing, and I was watching the game, because it was on delay here, I was watching the Bears-Packers game, just honestly like waiting for it to happen, I guess. And then my phone started blowing up. Well, I'm sure your phone is probably at a point where it's just like an overcharge. You probably don't, you're probably not even using it anymore because it, it blew up. It's like Schefter's uh, on a busy <laughs> Sunday morning. Um, so obviously people are also blowing up your phone because everyone just loves to probably give you a hard time about the Seahawks. So I'm just going to ask you straight up, Oof. are the Seahawks Super Bowl contenders? I think they're contenders to make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, I know that's like <laughs> insane hedging. Uh, I, I, I think that the Chiefs are in another, I, I think the Steelers are a lot better too, but I think the Chiefs in particular are in another class. But I also think the NFC is wide open, Diana. Like I, I think 
Yeah, we're coming off a huge Packers win, but we've seen the Packers, the Bucks, the Saints have their ups and downs. I think the Saints are the best team, but obviously there's a question mark given the status of Drew Brees and his health. So, I, yeah, I think they can win the NFC, but I don't think they're, you know, like the, the class of the conference or anything. I think that just speaks to more the parity in the conference. Mina, I know nobody talks about them, but I do want to ask you about the Bucks because there has been there's been quite a bit <laughs> of um, sort of body language reading and some quote interpretation since uh -oh. yesterday's game. What do you make of the cohesion or perhaps the lack thereof between Tom Brady and Bruce Arians? Because I don't think when you sign Tom Brady, the goal is to like have a nice season. It feels like to me it's Super Bowl or bust. Yes. Do you think they're good enough to represent the NFC at their home stadium in the Super Bowl? I think they are. I, I think the defense definitely is. The offense obviously has been chaotic and inconsistent. And it's kind of thing where like we're in week 12 and they're still figuring it out. Like it's way past the time at which that is acceptable. But I also think uh, this is a team that everyone overestimated coming into the season, not just because of the talent on paper, but because of what we've seen in recent years, right? Like this is... It, it's slightly modified, but this is this uh, Bruce Arians offense. This is who Tom Brady was last year. And for all the talk of, oh, we, the offense needs to be more like what Tom Brady's good at. We need more play action. Why are you forcing it downfield? Um, I don't think it's the kind of thing where like a few schematic tweaks and suddenly they're the Chiefs. This is a flawed team a flawed offense in some regards i think it has the upside to be one of the better offenses the conference we've seen them play at that level but we've also seen tom brady struggle under pressure similarly to how he did last year he's tied with carson wentz who's playing tonight with the most interceptions in the league when he's under pressure that's not just schematic that's just kind of who he is at this point so I, I, I'm not ruling them out because of how high their ceiling is, but I think the span of outcomes for this Bucks team is very large. So, Mina, going back to the defensive side of the ball, you just gave a lot of credit to Tampa Bay's defense. We all know your Seahawks have had a tough year defensively. <laughs> what do you attribute that to? Um, you know, it, it's been... There's been different issues in different games. I think the absence of a pass rush, especially until recently, is no secret. But there's been major lapses in coverage. To the Seahawks' credit, they've had significant injuries on that side of the football. Uh, Shaquille Griffin, Griffin, who's their best cornerback, who's coming back tonight against the Eagles, has been out for much of the season. Quinton Dunbar was playing hurt. He was the free agent corner they signed. Uh, Jamal Adams didn't play for much of the year as well. They lost Marquise Blair. They were hoping would be uh, the second safety early in the season. So they've had to kind of figure out things on the fly and, of course, went out and added Carlos Dunlap. Now, over the last two games, you've seen a lot of improvement in Seattle against uh, the Rams, who they lost to, really the offense lost that game, and then the Cardinals. So I think tonight the big question is, can they build on that? Can they continue to get something of a pass rush without blitzing? Can Jamal Adams, who said he played hurt last week, can he improve in coverage? And then does the return of Griffin dramatically improve their ability to defend the deep ball? This doesn't have to be one of the best defenses in the NFL. They just need to be average and competent for this team to contend because of how good the offense can be. I mean, I know it's always so hard as an analyst to not show your fandom, but you've kind of just chosen to say, hey, this is who I am. I love Seattle. I'm a Seahawks <laughs> fan. I can still do the job, but this is the team I grew up watching, loving, and I'm passionate about it. Have you had any support from any Seattle Seahawks players, like, you know, maybe sending a message like, hey, you should make this point, or hey, thanks a lot <laughs> for that. You ever get any love from Seattle? Um, You know, I think I'll, I'll say this, like, I'll call – being a fan, and I think any of us who roots for a team or follows a team closely, everyone loves Russell Wilson. Everyone loves Tyler Lockett. You know, everyone knows who Jamal Adams is. But I'm more likely to, you know, give a shout out to defensive tackle Puna Ford uh, than maybe your average national analyst. He's been very good this year. And, you know, I think a, a player like Puna recognizes that and appreciates the attention because, you know, as you guys know, uh, so many great players in the NFL don't get talked about much on the national level. Oh, no, that's definitely true. I tweet at Derrick Henry every day. 
he's never liked anything of mine. I see him every weekend. <laughs> it's like I don't exist. It's so annoying. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go with your style. I'm just going to pick somebody who's working really hard, who deserves the Yeah, you got to go a little not, lower. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I shot too high. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta lower my bar for, for that that Twitter love. I just put damn retweet. Uh, all right, Mina, thank you so much. Congratulations. Um, you, you've been so fun, and, and I'm I'm so glad you got the answer right. I mean, you're you're awesome under pressure, which I'm oh. shocked because I've seen you I've seen you drive. So, uh, awesome job. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. <laughs> Bye, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.